From the discovery of America, to the chaos of the Civil War, to the birth of the computer age, these and other turning points defined the course of American history. Individual lives are often defined by turning points as well. Nine LaGrange College students talk about how their lives were shaped by intense and sometimes amusing turning points on this edition of LaGrange College Presents. LaGrange College Presents. What was the turning point in your life, the event that changed you forever? For Lauren Brandner, it was witnessing the birth of her two younger siblings. That's when she decided to trade her dreams of becoming a professional athlete for a future in nursing. My name is Lauren Brandner. I'm a sophomore nursing major and a psychology minor. I started doing cross country, which I run here my junior year of high school. I did cheerleading for two years in high school. I ran track my senior year of high school. <laughs> I played soccer for five years varsity. And I swam for five years. <laughs> and I want to be a nursing major because my ultimate goal is to become a midwife. And that has been my goal since I was five years old. <laughs> Which a lot of people think is pretty strange. But I got to personally experience the birth of my two youngest siblings. And the doctor who delivered both of them was phenomenal. She, during the second one, she actually, because she knew I was so interested, she actually let me suit up in the scrubs and everything. And I got to ask her all the questions that I wanted to. And that was pretty much the turning point. I knew from that point on that that was what I wanted to do. And when I looked more into it, there's three different levels of midwifery or OBGYN. There's also something called a doula. Well, midwife's in between a doula and an OBGYN. You can do in-home deliveries, and it's a lot more personal than OBGYNs because they only see you maybe twice before you actually deliver, where midwives get to spend so much more time with you. They really get to help you learn how to become a parent. They're there for support until however long you really want them to be in your life and you just reference them for everything. You know, my child's sick with this, you call them in the middle of the night and it's like a support team. It's kind of like someone, I think it'd be really good if, for someone who doesn't maybe have a mom they can go to and say, you know, how do I do this? Or my baby's acting this way, they're crying, what does it mean? And the one thing that really drew me here was the fact that they do have a 100% pass rate. And I think it's because they really make sure that you're prepared before you enter their program. And I think I really liked it that even though I pretty much knew that I wasn't gonna switch majors, and I know, especially now, that I'm not gonna switch majors, that you do all your preliminary classes in the first two years, so that if you do wanna change, or specialize in a certain thing, you can kind of go another direction. So the nursing program is really focused into the last two years, which I found really helpful because then it's all nursing. And that's the only thing you're focused on instead of writing English papers or taking Spanish or things like that that I enjoy taking, but I feel like when I'm getting that close to trying to start in my profession that I don't want to be trying to focus on that. I want to be focusing and reviewing and really participating with patients and everything like they do with the clinicals. And that's what really, I think, drew me here. Jalen Smith was born and raised in LaGrange. A gifted singer, he battled a mild case of stage fright all through high school. The turning point in Jalen's young life came the day he enrolled at LaGrange College and was encouraged to audition for Smokey Joe's Cafe, a musical review. If he got the part, it would put him on stage in front of hundreds of people for 90% of the show's two-hour running time. Oh, 
In high school, I did have confidence issues. Overcoming was difficult, difficult, but it was, it made me strong. It, music for me really is an outlet, and uh, I love it so much because it's so real. And so my favorite aspect of the musical theater program is getting to work with all these people. I don't get to just work with theater people or just music people. We all have to come together. Uh, for an example, in Smokey Joe's, there's music majors in it and there's theater majors in it. There's songs about the guy being in love with the girl, but it doesn't work. There's songs about uh, going to a party and having a great time. There's all kinds of songs with, of all emotions. And so uh, there's definitely something in it for everyone. When you're in the room with all these talented people and you know that the audition pool was so big and it shrunk to now, I think, 12 people, it's really a privilege to be there and to be in the show. But I eventually want to be a professor. Uh, at a college now, I maybe I'm probably a music professor to be honest, but um, musical theater—it's I feel like it's limitless because you have to hone your skills on both sides. Um, this degree doesn't really allow you to become good at music without becoming good at theater, and vice versa, uh, because you learn how they work together. So, in sharpening skills on both sides, it just opens up all of these possibilities uh, for the future and it's really limitless in where I can go with my career. Individual lives are often defined by turning points, powerful, groundbreaking moments that offer vital clues as to where a person's life is headed in the coming days, months, and years. Although she was a straight-A student in high school, Amber Holmes was not ready to fully commit to life at LaGrange College. She needed a mentor, an advisor, someone to show her the way, and she found one. Actually, she found two. Around yeah. talk. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. My name is Amber Holmes. I am a junior mathematics major and servant scholar minor, and I'm from McDonough, Georgia. Okay. Service is one of the pillars that LaGrange was founded on, and I really, truly respect that because not only did they try to implement it into our lives, they made it a requirement for us to actually study what it is and study Robert Greenleaf and kind of go through the basics of what service is and why we do it and so that it's not just something good that we do to say, hey, I feel really good about myself, like go me, I'm a great person, but to really say, I am extremely blessed and there are so many people in this world, in my community alone, that I can help and that I need to help because it's my job and I was put here to do that. Um, I came to school here my freshman year and I started my pre-calculus sequence because I've always loved math and so I figured I would go ahead and get my core and stuff out of the way because I wanted to come in pre-med and go to med school. That's not necessarily what I want to do now but um, so I came in and I went to Mrs. Dr. Ernstberger's class and she was wonderful. She was exactly the, the person that I needed in my life at that time to kind of light the fire of hey, this is college, I'm going to help you, but look, this is real, so you need to get on your game. She became my mentor, my academic advisor, and she kind of just took me under her wing. Um, 
And then I started talking to her husband, Mr. Dr. Ernstberger. Um, I took a class with him, it was a core class, and every class period he'd opened up and he'd say, well, you know, I was studying my Bible today and I just thought I'd read Galatians to you guys for a second. And he'd read a few verses and then we'd just kind of talk about it for five minutes and then he'd be like, oh, just kidding. We're, we're going to get back to our stuff. I just wanted to read that to you guys because I felt the need to. And so that kind of is very, very moving to me that somebody would take the time out of just getting by and doing what you need to do to doing things that God really wants them to do. I just think that when I came to the school, I thought it was just going to be me getting my degree and then me going off to med school or even not med school, just getting a job, getting family, doing, you know, doing the life thing that everyone has in their head before they come to college. But since I've been here, my, my mindset has been completely changed into not what do I want to accomplish, but who do I want to be? What kind of example do I need to be for other people um, so that they can get out, of, get out of life as much as I do? Because I think my life is completely amazing. At the end of Andre Carter's first semester at LaGrange College, he found himself at a turning point. His grades were not good, and as the first person in his family to go to college, he felt like he had let a lot of important people down. Uh, my name is Andre Carter. I'm from Villarica, Georgia, and I'm majoring in early childhood education. Yeah, my first semester here, I, uh, I wasn't really quite ready, I would say, for college. I mean, my, I, I went to a great high school, but at the same time, it was one of those high schools where you didn't really have to study, I would say, to, you know, to, to get by. And, uh, I, I came here and, and I thought I, I thought I had it all. You know, I, I was on the football team and you know everything was going my way until I, I got in the classrooms and I, I wasn't quite ready for that challenge. I didn't know how to study, and it, it was tough. I ended up with a, a one point something GPA after my first semester. You know, I, I went home for the Christmas break and everything, and you know grades were going out. And all my friends calling, like, you get your grade for you know for uh, for science and biology and all that stuff, and I'm like. Yeah, I ain't really check because I knew I wasn't doing too high. You can, you know, you can feel, you can feel whether you're doing good in classes. And I was like, oh, you know, I, once I finally checked it, my mom, you know, she started asking, how, how you do first semester? And I, I pulled it up for her and I showed her on the banner web, and she was like, well, you're gonna go back the second semester and you're gonna get your stuff together, or you're not coming back home. So it was either I get my stuff together or I don't, I don't know where I'm gonna sleep. So she, 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 I don't think she meant it in the sense that she'll kick me out. But she, she's always been a rock for me to, to keep me grounded in. And that's exactly what she did. In my head, I knew I couldn't let her down. I mean, I'm one of the first people in my family, I am the first person in my family to go to college. And this year I'm finishing up. So it, it's just a great accomplishment. Like the, to see my mom smile and to know how proud she is and how proud I'm making her, it's, it's worth a million bucks. I went from just wanting to be a PE coach, football player type guy to actually wanting it teaches subject area, and I feel like I feel like I'd be great at it. It's something I really enjoy, so I, I really I really like doing it. And I went down to Whitesboro Road, and everything just started rolling. And the kids came in, and they were just like in love with me, and I was in love with them, and it was just an automatic connection. I just it Whitesboro Road is one of those schools where they they need they need somebody to love them before you know before they need a teacher, they need somebody to love them, and I love them, they love me, and. And it's been amazing. I actually get them tickets uh, to come down to the football games, and they root for me. Got my own little fan session there, and it's 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 ridiculously crazy. And I, I love them to death. And some of the baddest kids, I, I take them and I sit down and I talk with them, and I just, I just talk to them. And they they're human, and they know I'm human, and they just talk to me like they're talking to their friends. And once they get that relationship with you, that's when you can teach them. That's when you can tell them what's right and wrong, and that's what you can tell them you know, what to do. I mean, but as far as just going in and say, hey, I'm the teacher, you're the student, you do this and I'm gonna do this, you know, they're like, oh, you know, they're, they're rebels to it because they're, they're not used to somebody holding them and, and having compassion for them. So when they get that, it's new, but they like it, you know. So it, it's one of those things I enjoy doing. LaGrange College senior Kayla Klein planned to become a high school math teacher 
until the day she learned what the initials REU stood for. An REU is a research experience for undergraduates, and at an REU, math majors are invited to conduct professional level research at a major university. Kayla's 2013 REU at North Carolina State University was a turning point for her. It changed all her academic plans for the future. Check this out. My name is Kayla Klein and I'm from Cartersville, Georgia and I'm a math major. I, I came in wanting to teach high school and so I wasn't even planning on grad school at all. My sophomore year, I started kind of thinking about it. And so um, Dr. John Erzberger, my advisor, said, you should really look into these things called research experience for undergraduates. So I went for 10 weeks into Raleigh, to North Carolina State University, to do research in applied mathematics. E each of us had an applied math project. For ours, we worked with a group called Calabasas Creek Research over in California to do optimization of klystron circuits. What klystrons are are these tubes that are wave amplifiers. Um, they have a whole bunch of different applications like radar, cancer therapy, anything that needs to amplify a wave um, has probably has a klystron in it. So engineers have to build these klystrons to create a certain kind of wave that comes out. And so to do that, they have to have certain specifications tweaked just right to be able to make what they want. And so what we were trying to do was to create a computerized process in a program called MATLAB, which is kind of like computer programming for math language. And what it's supposed to do is make that guessing process automatic. And so they put in an initial guess, and our program in MATLAB will look at that guess, run it through RayJDisk, see how far away we are, and make a really educated guess. Stanford Lear Accelerated Laboratories um, house the longest building in the world, three miles long, that stands over a linear accelerator. Um, the linear accelerator is powered by these klystrons. There's 250 of them in a row. The klystrons, all 250 of them that were sitting on top of this linear accelerator, were the klystrons that we used to kind of get our program running. So we would take this klystron that's already been built and see if we could optimize it to the parameters that are already there. So that's how we checked to make sure that our Clash Drawn program was running correctly. And one of the things we're looking to do in the long run, we're not to it yet, but in the long run we're looking to um, optimize over the clinic Clash Drawn, which is a Clash Drawn used for cancer therapy and radiation. We're still looking to teach, but it really depends because I love the research so much while I was there, I could easily fall even more in love with it in college in grad school and want to keep with it and be a researcher instead. Can you enroll as a music major in college without even knowing one musical note from another? You can if you have a natural ear for music, are willing to work hard to learn the basics, and then work even harder to master music theory and composition. How did Alex Rodriguez go from being a self-taught piano player to having his musical compositions performed by the LaGrange Symphony? He says the turning point was the day he met LaGrange College music professor Lee Johnson. Some of my cousins play, but I'm the only musician in my family. We had a piano in our uh, living room, and it just sat there, nobody played it, and I think when I was like 13 or 14 I started playing it and I just kept going and uh, I, self, I was self-study so I just ended up teaching myself stuff and using the internet. My name is Alex Rodriguez. I'm from Swanee, Georgia. I went to a magnet school in high school called Grayson Tech and they had a music technology program there and my, my teacher at that course recommended LaGrange as a good music school. I got the chance to meet with Lee Johnson and you can come in writing any genre of music or performing and, and any style of music and they'll build with you, they'll work with you and you can build your skills to whatever type of, however you want to present yourself. Sleep Sound, I uh, wanted to create the situation of a lullaby 
you're holding a child and you're singing to it. And I just wanted to reflect the emotions and all the feelings that go into that. I, I really see film scoring as a, a long-term career, and I would like to uh, dabble in producing while in LaGrange. And I'm working with Angela Hutchings, and we're releasing, an, we've recorded an album last semester, and we're gonna be releasing it this semester. Nikki Stone knew she wanted to pursue a career in the arts, but was confused about which college to attend. The turning point came when she attended a high school drama convention. After that event, doors opened and a fine arts future filled with hard work, homework, and teamwork began to take shape. I, I love it. Like, it's just the adrenaline rush when you get on stage is like the best feeling in the world to me. I don't, I don't think I would fall in love with anything else as much as I love theater. My name is Nikki Stone and I am a theater major from Griffin, Georgia. The whole time I was in high school, we never really had that big of a drama department until my senior year. We went to FestCon and I met Professor Noel and I, I came the, the fall, like in the fall to see Sweeney Todd and we recognized her as Mrs. Lovett. So here's my thespian troupe going, oh my gosh, Mrs. Lovett! <laughs> and she talked me into coming to audition. And my first week of school, we had auditions for Metamorphosis. I got the role and not only did I get Alcione, I was a narrator and I was psyche. They had faith in me. And then I decided I wanted to go on a Jan term trip with Mrs. Riggs to New Orleans to learn about Tennessee Williams and we came back and um, did an evening with Tennessee Williams and it was pretty amazing and then after that we did um, the 39 steps I was on wardrobe crew we have our own technical assignments for every show if you're a major and that's really helpful I think because it gives you experience with something other than performance because that's kind of a gray area. You don't really know if you're gonna get a job right off the bat, but with technical stuff, they are always looking for people to do tech work. I just realized that this, this is it. This is where I need to be. Growing up, I had my mom and my dad, which is, was awesome, but we may not have had the best things. We may not have had the most money. However, I was taught that uh, God continues to provide. My name is Patrick J. Runnels. I'm a sophomore at LaGrange College, and I'm from Toonsburg, Georgia. I started working with my grandfather at the age of 13. He used to pay us $2 a day to put wood, which is cutting down trees, stacking trees, uh, and selling firewood. I currently have three jobs. I work at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, Highlands Country Club and I work with Chef Jeffrey Tucker catering. You work hard now so you can play later. So I work hard, I strive for it, working those three jobs as well as uh, I go out into the community and help out because people will help you if they see you giving, giving of yourself, giving of your time. I knew I wanted to um, be an early childhood education major in the seventh grade. I want to eventually impact some kid out there somewhere. My favorite grade level is those second and third graders because you can teach them something and you can see when the light bulb turns on like, I got it. And it's like, I understand this now and I will remember this and I can use it farther on. I work with that grade level at the Boys and Girls Club now and I'm loving it. And I was interning over there for the longest at a Rock Readers program. And 
My interaction at the Rock Readers program eventually led to me getting hired over there. They, they decided to keep me. And the Vero Reading program was started up by Mr. Michael Thomas, Rodman Battle, Anthony Jenkins, and myself. And we all worked together to um, come up with this, this program where we're just gonna go into the school system. If it just be 15 minutes, we wanna be able to talk to the kids about certain certain characteristics that they should exhibit. So for instance, last Thursday we talked on character. So with our reading program, we just hope to eventually plant a seed into each one of the kids. Um, we may not be here to see them grow, but hopefully one day that seed will grow and impact that kid's life. In the Bible, it tells you to train up a child in the way they should go. And when they get old, they will not depart from the and I feel like God always has his hands on me and continue to move me back and get me in the right perspective. Alex Blunt originally wanted to become a high school history teacher, but when he got to LaGrange College and became involved with Baptist Collegiate Ministries, he experienced a permanent change of heart and a temporary change of address. Well, originally I came to LaGrange, I wanted to be a history major and teach high school history. Um, and I, I knew that, that missions was something that I wanted to do. Uh, my name is Alex Blunt. I'm a senior religion and philosophy major here at LaGrange and I'm from Powder Springs, Georgia. I'm part of the Baptist Collegiate Ministries here on campus and they send people to different um, places each summer both in America and overseas um, to do mission work. I spent my summer in Maha Sarakam, Thailand. We taught at the university and uh, we taught English classes. Through that we uh, built relationships with students and, and made tons of friends. And, and our um, focus was just to talk about faith um, through the friendships that we built. We, we didn't want to just to go around as um, you know Westerners coming around just to spread this idea around. But we wanted to go and provide something for them, a service, uh, which was teaching English. And they, they wanted to know that. Um, and we were, we were glad to do that for them. But um, through that, we wanted to use that as a catalyst to share, share the gospel. And I believe that was um, an advantage on our part because um, they were willing to listen to somebody um, that was their friend rather than like I said, just a Westerner coming up and saying, here's a, here's a track or here's um, you know, a DVD, look at this and um, tell me what you think. Depending on the day, we would go to um, an elementary school in a village and we would go and do simpler lessons with them and uh, we would have like shapes on cards and teach them you know, circle, square. Um, we would do that in stations and then the um, pastor of the church we were at would also um, give a gospel message. Anywhere that I could I guess best reach the people that I'm, I'm trying to, to minister to would um, be my dream job, whether that's you know, in, in Maha Sarakam, Thailand, Moscow, Russia, um, LaGrange, Georgia, wherever that might be, wherever I feel that God has led me to, I should be there. My advice to a freshman would be to, to become involved in something on campus. I would encourage to become part of a, a spiritual life program um, because like, for me, through um, Baptist Collegiate Ministries, I've been able to, to go to Moscow, Russia and to Maha Sarakam, Thailand and have those experiences and to share the gospel there. Um, had I not become part of that, I would not have had those opportunities. Um, I've, because I'm part of the Servant Scholars, I'm more aware of ways to, to serve here in my local community. LaGrange does offer plenty of, um, of opportunities um, uh, that are really unique, I think. What was the turning point in your life? Author Paulio Coelho wrote, When we least expect it, life sets us a challenge to test our courage and willingness to change. At such a moment, there is no point in pretending that nothing has happened or in saying that we are not yet ready. The challenge will not wait. Life does not look back.